guys, welcome to Art Lessons. I am traveling today in the car, going to see my family, so I'm not live, but I didn't want you to miss out on drawing. I love art, and the more I can get you to draw, the better at any kind of art you're gonna be. So, this July, I wanted to, well, take it to the beach, because who doesn't really like going to the beach? I mean, sand, sun, sand castles, sea creatures. So we're gonna be doing something that's beach themed every Wednesday this month. There might be a couple that have to be filmed or I might add some extras in because I will be doing some traveling. It's July, we're kind of off. So let's kick it off with a sea castle. I did this kind of cute and simple and whimsical because I wanted to give you the base and you could add to it. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps Feel free to send any kind of sandcastle facts, like maybe perhaps your favorite beach you've ever been to. Maybe you've never been to the beach and there's a beach you want to go to, or maybe you are so lucky because you get to live at the beach. So send me those favorite beaches. By all means, maybe somebody will see it like me and maybe I'd get to go to the beach. So let's do that and let's start it off. I'm going to, can you see this one over here, Keaton? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna start it off and we're gonna start right in the middle. If you see this, we're gonna put this first, you see the rectangle there? We're gonna do that rectangle. So we're gonna put that in and we can kind of, I'm not that worried about the bottom. Now the nice thing is when something's made of sand, it doesn't have hard right angles, 90 degree angles. Oh, there was a funny angle joke, but I can't think of it right off the top. I saw it on Facebook, but if you think of an angle joke, send that one too. Um, but sand is gonna be curved. It just doesn't have that ability in when you're building a sand castle to make those really sharp angles. So if you get that initial rectangle, then you can start to add those extras. So we're gonna add this, what's this name on a castle? It has a very, uh, not, no, the turret, but this part of the turret has a name. So we're gonna make that whatever this is called. So I'm gonna look for your comments on what that's called. So I think it's a, wall thingy. a wall thingy is what Keaton says. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out a little bit. You see how I did that? Kind of like a backwards J. And we're gonna come across, and then we're gonna scoop in. Almost like we're giving the wall a smiley face. And then we're gonna come across about the same distance, scoop in, and come across just a little bit past our rectangle, and come back again. So if you get those kind of a little wonky on the sides, you can correct them, or sometimes you can always start with this line, add your smiley faces on either side, and bring it back down around. That way you'd have that extra little way to make sure you center something. So let's give it its archway, its doorway. So it's just like you're gonna make a rainbow. You're gonna come up, just like that. Did you know the corner of a room is the hottest part of the room? Oh, oh, wait, wait. Keaton has an angle joke. He said, do you know that the corner of the room is the hottest part of the room? Why, Keaton? because it's always 90 degrees. <laughs> so, okay. So basically, you already see our center. Can you start to see how we're gonna build this? We're gonna repeat this same idea on either side, but notice, as with drawings, we're always concerned with what's in front, foreground, what's behind, in the background or behind. That helps give us some kind of level of dimension when you're drawing. So we're gonna make sure we wouldn't draw that line across there. We're gonna tuck it behind. So let's start with our rectangle and it comes up a little bit from where that is. So we're gonna start it right here. And then look, that rectangle comes up to about right there. So let's bring that up. And then remember it came to the middle of the turret. It's like a, all I can think of is Capulet, but that's Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> So we've done that. Let's do that on the other side. Let's repeat that. 
And if you want to do it this way, if you're worried about where it's going to start, I'm going to do it the opposite direction. I'm going to start at the top and then come down the side and then come back in. So you see what happens there. Can you draw things going into the gate? Ew, Keaton just asked if you could draw things going into the gate. By all means, you could make it a castle castle so it could be horses and knights and things like that, or you could make it a sea sand castle. It could be crabs and seahorses. So, or by all means, it could be whatever you wanted it to be. So we're gonna start with the same idea. Notice it's behind. So we're gonna come up here, come across, smiley face, come across, smiley face, and back down. The thing that kind of gives it, you're wanting it to be a little bit wider than this one. You see that? Let's try that again over here. You should be good at it. Where is the third time we're doing it? You've got this. Come across, come across, and back down. And really, if you do this and you get a little bit tighter, you can start creating a real castle. So remember we drew the dragon um, last week. You could just tighten this up a little bit. I'm trying to be a little bit loose because I want it to have more of that sand feel. But if you used a ruler or really made this tighter, you could create a, a castle for your dragon. So again, if we look at this, we've got rectangle, 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 rainbow, basically an arch right there. You see, and this is basically, eh, it's almost a square, but it looks like a rectangle to me. Notice where it's starting. It's starting right here, again, behind. So we're gonna come back up right here, come over here. We're starting on either end. And then I'm, I want to give it a little bit of a curve, but not quite straight. I want it to have this softness to it. So, and then if we're breaking down the shapes, we've got a triangle. So let's go on up here. I'm going to come out a little bit and then come back up here. Now, if I start going a little fast for you, don't worry. You can pause anytime. That's the best thing about a recording. And even if on the lives, you can, I always post them afterwards and you can see them recorded. So really now we start adding details. Once we put in all our shapes, rectangle, 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 triangle, item of mystery, which I'll figure out right after I finish filming the video. Uh, what? It's a battlement. Is it a battlement? Talia's provided battlement. What do you think that is? Keaton, uh, Keaton just pulled his phone out. He's Googling. We're going to solve that mystery. So meanwhile, we're going to give it flags, whatever it is. So kind of towards the ends right here, we're going to put up the pole. We're going to shimmy or a pole. And you can put that anywhere you want to. So I'm going to stick one right there. I'm going to stick one right there. Battlement. Battlement is the official term Talia has. Yes, the little with the smiley face in it. Yes. See, we're all here. You, everybody learns something new every day. I just learned something new. Okay, so we've got our flag poles. To make the flags, if you notice this little arch in it, when you're making a flag, that helps you get that, um, that feeling that it's flying. So if we do this, so instead of just a straight triangle, if you do that little curve in there, you'll get that feeling of flying. So as though the wind's gusseting it out. The individual parts have names too. Oh, the individual parts. So this is the battlement as a whole. And then what's the, what's the individual? The gaps are called crenels. So our smiley face are called crenels. Is that with a C or a K? C-R-E-N-E-L. C-R-E-N-E-L-S. And then the race parts are called merlons. Merlons. Merlons and crenels. M-E-R-L-O-N-S. Let's be very specific. M-E-R-L-O-N-S. And then C R C C R. How do you spell the other ones? E N E L S. E N E L S. Okay. Who knew 
that the sandcastle would be very official with only the most appropriate terminology for castles. And, battlements. <laughs> and then battlements, that's right. <laughs> now, we do want your sandcastle to be architecturally correct. <laughs> My kids are so awesome. I know yours are too. Thank you for sharing with me. Okay, so let's add this seashell. I want to just break it down. You see how it's made of individual parts? But notice those, you're looking for details. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna come in like that. See how we made that line and then we came back in. That's that base part of that scallop shell. And then we're gonna come out this way and then you're literally gonna scallop along. So, can you make as many of the towers as you want? Or? I keen asks if you can make as many of the towers as you want. I think you could make if you were such the best sandcastle builder. When when we build sandcastles, we like to build like a corner and then a corner and make a wall. You can make your sandcastle that way, and this could actually be your corner, and your wall comes off here, or. Um, has anyone made the fairy sand castles where you get the wet sand and you hold it in your hand and it drizzles on down? You could even try and, you know, make squiggly lines if you wanted the top of your sand castle to be like that. So now that we've got our official terms, we've got our scallop shell. We're just gonna bring those lines into the middle, just like that. And I realized I forgot our flag on the very top. I was so excited about getting our castle terms. So we put our thing up there, and there we go. So we've got, oh, we need our little rock decor. Now you could put more shells there if you wanted. You can put whatever you want, but for rocks, we're gonna kind of make lopsided squares. So you kind of think of a- You can put designs on the flags. You can put designs on the flags, like if your sand country had a designer, you could put pirate. Uh, like skull and crossbones. You'd be a pirate castle. Um, you could put stripes. You could do, I love that. Keaton asked if they could put designs on the flag. I love that. So it's kind of like rounded corner squares that are a little funky. And then we're going to give a few rocks at the entry. So you can just kind of put some kind of glumpy shapes is what you end up with. Kind of that sort of thing. And we'll give it a little entry that way. Now the nice thing is you want to remember it sitting in sand, so we don't necessarily need this straight line. We can kind of do lines like that to give it that feeling of sand. You know, how that sand when you walk on it, it ends up. And then to help give it a little bit dimension and detail, I put a little line right there as though it was a shadow line, very simplified, so we can do that idea just kind of the beginnings of starting to get that dimension on there. And then because sand is actually made of tiny little crystals, instead of really shading, I decided to do some of that crystal, that idea to remind you. Remember a lot of painting and even drawing, you're giving the impression of something. So if you were doing as though this castle was made of bricks, you wouldn't have to put every brick in. You could put a few bricks here and a few bricks there, be like a rubric, but it, <laughs> it would be the kind of thing that what you would do is you would give the viewer or your audience the impression that it was made of stone or brick. So what you could do is just add a few little dots here and there, just kind of giving that impression. And there's no right or wrong. I tend to do it more in the corners or off to the sides because it kind of gives, helps give the impression of shading. And as always, if you want to do some shading, to me, I would just hatch a few lines. So anywhere it's in front or behind, if you want to do that. But on a scene castle, I don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about shading and shadows because it doesn't cut in and indent quite as much as other things. So we could kind of end up doing that a few things. And then really the one place I would shade and give it shadow is this, your entry right there. You want to give it the feeling as though you can actually go in. And dark 
recedes, meaning it would go away. So it's as though there's nothing there you can walk on in. So to do that, you can just shade it on in. And if you give it a little bit of darker to the side and the top, just a hair, it'll add to that dimension. So just that that's a little bit darker there as you come along. And I kind of end up, I almost can't help myself that I just start putting things everywhere and want to come along like that. So you really, you can start now to decorate your sandcastle. You could add more over here. Like Keaton mentioned, you could add more turrets. And if you're adding turrets, then you're adding battlements and crenels and merlons. So now you have to go tell somebody, oh, I was working on my crenels and merlons today. <laughs> so I never knew drawing a sandcastle could be so much fun. So if you have that, this is great because this gives you the base for developing whatever you want it to be. And as long as you remember, drawing is breaking down shapes and relationships and what's in front, what's behind. You know, if we get it down to the core of what it is, rectangle, 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 triangle, triangle, triangle. And you just look at it and then you start to make those little adjustments like where we put our flag in. Keaton asked if we could decorate. I'll put some stripes on mine. You can do it however you want. You can always add color too. But I think that's gonna give us a pretty cute sandcastle. Now, what I want you to do is add some more to it. See if you can add some more shells. What would you find or what did you find the last time you were on the beach? Did you find some sea glass or different types of shells? Did you find, um, seaweed you can clump seaweed up around there or different kinds of rocks that's where it becomes personalized and fun that's one of my favorite things is to stick all the extra stuff in the sand so i hope you enjoyed this lesson we will be live next wednesday and we're going to be doing an octopus so it's a funky one where we're going to use all sorts of circle shapes to make that so we'll see you next wednesday at 3 p.m remember we're drawing the going to the beach and all sorts of things that have to do with water, sand, and sun. So enjoy July, guys. Artist man's nature, nature's God's art. Thanks so much.